year, 81 year old man, a former doctor who was enjoying his retirement, was killed or murdered by the assassins or the silence in Masaka. And the phone call from his daughter, who is out of the country, is what alarmed villagers that something had happened to him. Today, he is long gone, making the least 25 plus members or community or loved ones or family members or friends that have actually passed away because of what's happening in Greater Massacre region. And it is daunting, it is saddening, but the question stands, what is the state of security in a country such as Uganda when just in April, June, we had an increment in the budget for security, moving it to one of the biggest that is receiving money in this financial year, 7.7 .7 trillion shillings out of the 41 Point three trillion shillings for the entire Ugandan budget. Felix Nkonda, the state of security in Uganda. Well, of course, uh, if you want to take a general spectrum into um, the reception of security in this country, one would say it is, it is even above fairly okay. I would want to say it's fairly okay. But one would say it is good because then you would want to cause a merger into the, the border aspect vis-a-vis -vis the internal security. And the sporadics happening in Masaka, not that we want to say they are not uh, alarming, they are very really much alarming as long as they take anyone's life. That's for a fact. But as a matter of fact, on the general spectrum, the status of security in this country has been quite consistently getting better since the NRM or the then NRA government took place. And that's a matter of fact, not far from uh, debate. However, the, this particular event in Masaka has also unfolded quite much for us to give uh, rightful thought in terms of what's happening internally. As the saying goes, the presence of peace in its own self does not mean absence of insecurity. Uh, we have seen some of these killings that are quite precedented, and this is not new, Robert, I know, but it is quite evident to the same, because I think he used to cover most of these police activities. Remember the times where we had the, uh, so we used to throw Vipapura, uh, that mm. time of Vipapura. We had this Bijambi as sometime even in Those Kampala. 2017 and into 2018. Yeah, around that time. We remember we used to have in them, they happened in Chengeda. Mm. We had still in Masaka, by the way, then we had those enormous killing of women in Entebbe. What am I saying is that relating all these events, they, they, they happen as evidences of three particular things if you want to cause analysis. One is that they come in to, to check the political administration. You may want to talk about that regionally or at the helm of a country. Secondly, it also checks the social welfare of these particular areas. For example, uh, then they were attributed to uh, sacrifice, what and what, you know, political instability, if you remember, people started to release photos of people who they want to kill and all that. But thirdly, they cause question into the normative stance of our security agencies. If you try to put together what different players have come out to say about this particular event, and in particular you would want to quote the RDC of Massacre now, uh, that is uh, Fred Bamune, Bamune, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you would want to listen to what police is saying, but also to what the locals are saying. You fail to find a merger of all these different statements and, and that's where we lose the confidence as a matter of fact that if we are not having it good in sync by the different because the rdc is the head of security at that level i think at, the, at now at city level actually is rcc if i'm not mistaken his statement towards this when he comes out and says that now we have been geared up he, he comes out to confirm that they have been lacking in terms of deployment as, as an institution uh, Secondly, when you hear police statements coming out to say that they are also going to now intensify, that is the evidence of this the gap in terms of security. And what now the Wanainchi are saying is that these people who are committing all these atrocities against the people in Massacre are not different people. That Tebava, that they're not from, they are people who are from that locality. What am I saying? You see, security has been, and, and, and I think it is a result of enjoying peace for a long time. Uganda as a country are not used to these security, you know, 
pockets. They happen, but we, we, are, we are used to a peaceful, probably people, and because of that, people normally sleep on duty. And what's more, our security agencies. Many people have died. Not even one life could be, should be lost in terms of issues of security. But let me just say this conclusively about this whole thing for now. The will determines so much and how kind of security is done in a country. Politics is a true determinant of the kind of policing, I'll be honest with you. The judicial system in a country then is the ultimate consideration. Most of the people who will be arrested if they will, you will hear that they are previous convicts, they escaped from prisons, they were gotten and they, they were, then they got to bail, then they, all those kind of things. So, as we look at these matters, as seeing uh, the Honorable Mathias Simpuga, who is the MP of the area, uh, trying to talk to citizens, saying that they have given, I think, uh, police an ultimatum. If they don't, they will also. And, 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 and the truth of the matter is that we must accept to have a comprehensive approach that engulfs politics, that engulfs society, and the judicial systems. Because as a matter of fact, if none of these three is working in the right path, you don't go and deal with criminality. Which and, and brings from. us to the place of asking ourselves the role of government, Robert, the role of security, the role of a community in actually curbing those raising fears. Because uh, now people and are judicial honestly, officials. <laughs> and judicial. Uh, people are honestly in fear of their lives. Even if it's now broad daylight, there's fear uh, that is happening in Greater Massacre. How can all these particular roles actually contribute to forging a way forward? Well, Priscilla, I'm going to base this on the foundation of uh, uh, policing and fighting criminal or criminality in rural areas. Because in urban areas, uh, in third world countries, many have advanced into technology. Say in Kampala, you could have the cameras. In Kampala, you could have, uh, people even have, you have the government cameras, CCTV cameras, people have installed their cameras. Then there's lightning everywhere, movements. But when you're going to ensure security, in rural areas. These are the foundations. And if you go wrong, then such incidents may will happen or can happen. First and foremost, we must understand uh, that what's happening in Greater Massacre today, security is not something you do abrupt. You have to be proactive. It's not about uh, something that's sparked off, then you respond. And their basis, and if you lose them, so when this time happens, they become very uh, problematic. For example, in rural settings, one of the key aspects is intelligence. Intelligence, those that have been in Uganda for some time and have been awake to the issues of security, will tell you that there was once a time an organ called special, special branch. Yes, it had its weaknesses, but these were people who would be on the village, Priscilla. A person would come maybe like they're selling charcoal, stay there for some time, gather intelligence. Because for any action, you need to have people on the ground who can penetrate into these rackets, into these circles. How are we doing in terms of intelligence? I must accept, and I want to tell you, that we've had challenges over time. You've had what I want to term as the exotic, the pedigree in terms of gathering intelligence. We can't say that because most recently we've just gone through elections mm -hmm. and uh, there was so much intelligence that was being gathered yes. day in, day out. <laughs> yes, that you can't allude to that. So but you I cannot want to tell say you. that in such a time I want to tell you, intelligence actually, gathering I, 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 is low. Let me just I, drive I, my I, point just home. Robert, just Robert, uh, actually, you cannot know intelligence. That, this that, is what that, that's the purpose. <laughs> if you know intelligence, then it is not intelligence. It's uh -huh. just like an intelligence. And what are we having? That's what I'm driving at. And, and what are we having? That many times, uh, police will tell you through our intelligence information. That yes, they had their team that will tell them. Because one of the roles of police is detect and prevent. How do you detect? You must have fami a formidable force on ground that is going to give you timely information for you to respond timely. So that is one of the things that we've over time in our settings given away. Second is confidence. Because people, like Felix talked about this, that you might find that people could have relevant information. But do we have we established confidence among police first and foremost that when you volunteer information, this may seem simple. But this is what the NRA in, was using. In that regard, mm. uh, we have had testimonials mm. from some of these victims. Mm. Of they have uh, 
called police, but because of the minimal deployment, you know, in the different police centers, they are not able to reach the places of crime happening in real time because of lack of human resource. Mm. That was, uh, okay, from confidence, that is another thing I was coming to. Then that brings me to deployment, because first you must have the intelligence information, that people can give you relevant information and time. That we suspect a Chidawali may. You know, Chidawali may uh, comes from around six, yes? And we don't know where he spent the entire night. So s we have some people who are able to monitor and tell us that. Then you need deployment. Deployment also comes with visibility police vis visibility or security personnel that a person will know that maybe a few meters from here there could be a police station there could be a police officer there could be deployment i like some statements made by some of the villagers here they were saying but That's if true. they said that a night before so and so was going to move or walk you would see all the maybe a bit of security taken there those heavy deployment visibility alone can hinder a person from committing crime. Because you know, maybe there's a police officer there, there's a security officer there. But when people know that we do not have this, uh, police is very far away. Then the other thing, like I told you, there are things that we've given up, the LC systems. Previously, I'll take you back some years in this country. When uh, uh, NRM had just conquered, they came with what they called RSC. I don't know if you remember them, but Felix, I think, remembers that. Yeah, and. Or oh, oh, you've heard of the RSCs, yeah, 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 yeah. RSC system. These people were, were village leaders, but they were empowered. You could hardly access a village and you not registered so that so and so has entered this village. Because someone would report to the LC someone that would report. someone who has moved into the There's location. Someone, mm -hmm. And that goes back to the intelligence network mm -hmm. that they must say, this young man we are seeing in this village, he comes home, comes back at night. How? you know how, how did he access this village this is a stranger but now what has put these systems is kasim you know kasim mm -hmm. hey. and now she says okay how do you get it you get up on you know talk to this one when these Gamba systems Gamba <laughs> Gamba <no> <laughs> these systems <laughs> that were building our nation that were relying on today they have been destroyed everyone is powerful this unit very strong because the lc system is number one in ensuring uh peace in an area. So that has been destroyed over time. Now they have remained to be maybe land brokers, sign on passport, letters, recommendations. Mm -hmm. We need to empower them. Then finally it's community police. But, but j just Priscilla, what mm -hmm. do you mean by empowering local? Uh, who, is support, who, who should empower them? I don't know. I just don't it comes from a place where you, you, because of limitation maybe in uh, police, in terms human of resource, then the community has to take matters into their hands while deployment is uh, being awaited uh, you know, on the different police posts. So I think that's where he's coming from. But speaking of which, we have seen a growing pattern of uh, these community crimes and they take quite a long spell of over a month, two months, three months, life-threatening at that. Uh, you talked about the women that were being killed in Entebbe. We have seen Nansa now also being affected. Trangira during COVID-19 uh, has been one of the target places actually also among other places and now Masaka region is also facing the same thing they seem to be having a growing pattern around them the question would be how are these actually attributed to one the COVID-19 that we are in especially for Masaka and the economic development for a city that has just gained status uh, status mm -hmm. and also the welfare of the people uh, Felix well, well uh, Priscilla and Robert and uh, viewers as well, it, 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 it's very important that when you discuss such matters, you must make or work towards uh, also causing the effect. A couple of years now, the resolutions and probably also laws were passed that some institutions or places or areas would be getting different statuses, and among them was massacre. Now, the need of a city to run and pick up the pieces and redefine itself from a level of a district to a city must one of the major principles that beacon is such movement should be security in the absence of security there will be no attraction for any person to come and do business 1986 1985 1984 Uganda was not a destination for investment and, uh, and you can go and and, and research how many investors came 
during that time, being honest. For example, today, even if you had lots of money, can you go and invest in Afghanistan? How many people are investing in the likes of South Sudan? We have had how many truck drivers being killed there? So who, even if you are to invest, Robert, can you say now I want to go and start up a truck business in, in Sudan? You go to the Tigray in Ethiopia. What am I saying? The effect of insecurity on social economic development of any particular society is evident. In fact, by now, I can tell you that there are more than 1,000 people who have left Masaka. Now, this would work backward in terms of the purchasing power, the purchasing traffic of people who operate in this place, even in terms of settlement. So, when you do look about security, it, it has other issues that are intertwined with it. And you cannot miss to juxtapose security and social economic development of any kind of setup. And this is why the police of Uganda, the UPDF, the political leadership of Masaka, and whoever is interested, or even the societies, must take this seriously. Whether with the assistance of any other organization, and I'm glad that the Honorable Matthias Impuga also in the opposition, has taken interest to meet people. I saw him yesterday meeting various people, trying to visit people who have lost their colleagues and all this, trying to gather some information to share. You know, this should be a matter of importance. I hope it is discussed in Parliament tomorrow. Because it, 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 it says so much about how far this project of getting so many cities will go. Because if Masaka fails, Fort Porto will fail. Fort Porto, Guru, and other cities, because they must be working. The, the, the growth must be defined together. Because what has been happening, or what's happening in Masaka, could shift. But if we use this to make sure it stops and never happens elsewhere, it's promising for Masaka people. And as a matter of fact, between you and me also, knowing that every life of every Ugandan matters, regardless which, which of Which causes where. me to ask myself a question, that um, we've had, quote-unquote, um, the, 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 the big of this country uh, being touched by a bullet. And uh, there's a directive that is passed immediately, uh -huh. instantly. Uh, I think most uh, best-case scenario would be uh, the attempted murder on uh, General Katumba Wamala. Oh, yes. And there was a directive right from the president in that regard. Yet when it comes to the normal Ugandan who equally deserves as much attention and um, you know entertainment of what's going on in their region, you would be expect this. You would be expecting the same, quickness. yeah, treatment uh, being given because mm. you cannot lose so many people and in such a little time, all in the name of security at that matter. So it, it causes me to ask myself a question: of Do we have? <laughs> social <coughs> divide? What, what do we call that? Yes, well, I think, uh, Priscilla, I wouldn't want to call it social divide, uh, but one of the things we must understand, and which security has come out to confess, for example, the RDC said, yes, there was lacticity at some point, but also uh, there were challenges in deployment. You know, Felix uh, first alluded to the fact that when you enjoy, maybe we've had these areas peaceful for some time, that some of the basics that had to be put in place could not have been put in place. But the question would be, now that it's happened, have we seen, have we seen them awake? I'm lively informed today. I think uh, that is the Minister for uh, Internal Affairs is heading there and will be camping there. There are a couple of deployments now being carried out uh, to ensure that this area uh, is being, this peace is being restored in this area. So, also you must understand that I, of late, police has gone so much into scientific gathering of evidence. Scientific gathering of evidence. That is why you hear that in, uh, for example, in some of these murders, you resort to equipment like CCTV What is cameras. scientific gathering of evidence? Uh, you know, previously, uh, we had uh, not enough technology in investigation. Uh, where you have uh, the DNA banks, you have CCTV cameras, you have fingerprints, you have all that technology. But this may not be applied in the raw setting at times. Because what you may find in the raw setting, you know, you, yes, you can pick DNA. But also DNA, because of lack of awareness, these areas are going to be contaminated. In rural areas, when a person is murdered, the first thing they'll come on. But also, they are, they are not that, there is no database for the so, few, who, the Yeah, but in some of these, we've either gone uh, extend to our neighbors that have better of these facilities. 
So in rural settings, what you rely on more are the five pillars I've told you. So it's still something that complicates it. Well, as in urban settings, you may have so much of uh, ease in investigating these matters. But all the same, one thing we believe and know, that with government in terms of security, they'll up the game and that is hope for the people of Greater Massacre. Okay, all right. Um, uh, final would be the discussion of the cost of uh, these matters. Uh, the survivors are having to face hefty bills. Uh, we had the president uh, committing to give 10 million shillings uh, to the person's family who has passed on, um, which, which um, would be a solution. But then again, what are the better solutions that we can actually con uh, have discussed in this regard oh, to be able uh, to return life back to the massacre region? I think this gives us an opportunity as a country generally uh, to refocus our arguments on the most important things away from cheap politicking, away from cheap concentration on, in terms of uh, the absence or the missed opportunities in politics or even other spheres. How about we start the real discussions of life-changing events in this country, and those must be sparked by the institutions and arms of government. For example, I'm hoping and praying that the cabinet has a minute to discuss today in terms of security in the region of Massacre. I am also hoping that the judiciary should meet and discuss about the role of the judiciary in building security. What is the role of the judiciary in construction of security they can go particular to have topics in regions where they have done less as i told you earlier that you don't be surprised that some of the criminals in these cases have been former criminals who have been given bail or who are actually on bail or who have escaped from prisons or what all these kind of things but fourth on top of all these institutions the executive and the judiciary let parliament have some sober discussions in terms of security. There's a role of parliament in enhancing security in nation building because that is the key. Away from just allocation, how about we talk about how do we have, for example, how do you say we don't have enough deployment? That's a, what kind of excuse is when that? When during elections we had so we, many we, security we, agencies we had, we being had brought together. Overflow. Don't even go uh, far. Most recent inspections over kids, you had different security overflow represented on the team. You see, that makes sense, Priscilla. When the police talks about uh, not having enough deployment, yes, we must accept that if international standards required, uh, it is one police officer per 500 people. Mm. And when you come That's to Uganda, we've not yet robots. gotten to that standard. So, yes, there is a human resource gap. That in is why you're saying Robert that is why we're saying it, that if they had said Chidabo oh. is going to walk. So, w at that point, the standards change no, this, this, that you're going is, to go and arrest is, Mr. Chidabo I of, think of you're NOP taking this with so simplicity in terms, but when you look at policing a, a gathering, a political crowd, that is something that maybe you know that here and here, but policing an entire Greater Massacre region, human resource numbers come. But to finalize this, uh, for me, this is my plea. Uh, to government and security agencies in this country. Let's go back. There's so much, Priscilla and Felix, and people watching us, that we've lost in terms of the foundations of security in communities. Okay. Let's go back to these foundations. What were those that kept us safe? Community policing, we had the LC system, a strong system. Then we'll later look at human resource, how we can extend police visibility and deployments closer to the people. On behalf of the massacre region, we call upon the office of the president to do more than actually just give money to people who have lost lives. Uh, let's call all that is availed to the different offices to be able to actually sort out this sooner than later. Uh, lest fear engulfs the region and it then affects what we call the economic social development of that particular area. Um, we will be looking at messages responding to our poll question this morning later on. But